Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil Family Farms YouTube series. This morning I'm really excited. We have AJ here from Growing Organic. We're gonna be making some Jadam. This is a product that I've talked about a lot. So I'm really excited to share with you today how you can make some Jadam at home. It's been one of the best products, honestly, AJ, that we've used here in the greenhouse. Yeah. We're super grateful for you providing that for us and helping us keep some of the pests at bay. I've used everything from Neem. Uh, I love EM5 from Build a Soil. That's my other top product. We've used Captain Jack's, we've used Dr. Zymes, but we have a pretty big aphid problem here in the summertime on our pepper plants always every year. And uh, Jadam has just been my go-to every single time. So thank you so much for being here today yeah, with absolutely. us. I'm excited to do this. And we give out the recipe on the back of every bottle. So if you bought a gallon of Jadam, the recipe's on the back. It can be a little bit intimidating. It's pretty simple, but there's definitely some precautionary steps we have to take too. And we're gonna go over that in detail to make sure everything stays safe. Uh, I think every single grower, especially if you're at an indoor grow, you need this product in your like line on your shelf. You need it. It's one of the best. We use it three times a week. That's basically how this video came about. I was asking AJ, I'm like, yo, I need much more than I can get in this little bottle. I'd really love to, you know, figure out how to make it. And so we just decided to do this video today because we want to share that with you. We use the Jadam either with EM5 or by itself. We spray three times a week and I use one to four ounces per gallon. When I do mix it, I don't have any problems uh, with it emulsifying. It mixes into cold water just fine. I still always use warm water as a, like a precursor. I mix in a smaller jar and then I put it in my larger tank. Yep. We've used it really consistently and it annihilates aphids. I forgot to order parasitized wasps, this parasitizing wasps this year. <laughs> and uh, they worked really well last year, but between those and the Jadam, your product has been our sole saver here in the greenhouse this summer. Yeah, it's function well against, uh, against aphids and others like soft-bodied insects. And, you know, I think like you mentioned, the, the one to four ounces. So like if you're actively battling an aphid like outbreak and they're everywhere, you definitely want to go on the higher end of that towards yeah. the four ounces. Yeah. And then, you know, if it's just like a maintenance, you know, one or two ounces is, is pretty good, so. And because it's a soap, it's an insecticidal soap, I heard pretty you mention. Much, yeah. We can't, we can't call it that or label it that without giving the government a bunch of money, so we're not doing that. But it's basically what it is. We're, just, we're gonna make soap. On that note, I used to use Thermex quite a bit to emulsify any product in, in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Now we just use the Jadam. So yep. then the other thing I wanted to mention, not just for that purpose, but we also used it at the beginning of the season as a wetting agent, along with Kuaha. We used both of those when we were in our smaller cells, our tent would dry out super quickly. And so we used it a lot to help with water retention. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely go on the lower end if you're gonna use it as like a drench. The Q is gonna be better just because it does contain oils and such. So I wouldn't recommend doing drenches all the time with it in the soil, but on occasion in a small dose, I'd probably say like, a half ounce a gallon, something like that. So yeah. we were watering with a chapin perfect, perfect. and we would put in one ounce in our one chapin. Oh, perfect. And yeah. we'd water it in with okay. like whatever we were feeding yeah, that day. So basically like a third of an ounce per yeah, gallon. Really like light, yeah, really light, really yeah. lightweight. Yeah, 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 so yeah. thanks for mentioning Good. that. Yeah. Like inside, typically I would use it as like a maintenance. Again, like one to two ounces a gallon. I would definitely step it up again to the, to the four ounces a gallon and then probably some back-to-back -back sprays if you're battling aphids, especially aphids. It'll, it'll handle some other pests, but it definitely, aphids are the ones that it really handles pretty well. I would probably do two or three days in a row at four ounces a gallon, real heavy sprays, and then reassess the situation from there. The first spray, I know you guys have seen this too, you'll pretty much handle probably 95 to 97% yeah. of them in, in the first spray. And then you'll notice they'll still be on the plant, but they'll be dead, yeah. you know? So coming through and washing that off or doing that second spray to try and remove some of that, some of those carcasses would definitely be a good follow-up yeah, step. I think too. I've also used water to kind of knock yeah, them off too. Yeah, 100%, yep. And this is not a product you want to spray in flour. This is veg only. You can use it, you know, with tomatoes and things like that because the, the cannabis is gonna be, you know, combusted. We don't wanna use this in, in flour at all. You could probably get away with it like the first 10 days before you really get blood set. But after that, I wouldn't apply it. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention too and that I've noticed with Jidam um, compared to other products is because of the amazing way that it emulsifies because it's in a, a soap already, right. I get really great coverage. Uh -huh. Whether I'm using my Chapin sprayer or the Grow King sprayer, they both spray differently. One's just like an air pressured and, uh, like pumped sprayer and the other one, you know, really does a fine mist. But right. one thing I've noticed about Jadam is I can get really great coverage on my plants 
yep. without a lot of blotching. Yep. So yeah, I really the, love that about your product. That saponification, you know, it's like the soap aspect of it really gets it to spread. Yep. And that's like what a true surfactant is, you know, and the ones we had back in the day was like, you know, you'd have like cocoa wet or something like mm -hmm. that from the hydro shop. Um, and that stuff was pretty soapy. But yeah, that's that's that mode of action. And that's one of like the biggest things when you're when you're spraying for pests, for aphids in particular, coverage yep. is so important. So Especially if you're not, organics. yeah, if you're not getting under, over, drenching it, whatever you've got to do, then you're number one, not doing it right. And you need to make sure you have a product like this that will fully emulsify, fully coat, and, and make sure you're actually getting everything. Yep, so. yep. And if you're like a fan of like using neem or Karanja or something like that, you can use this in place of the Agsil or Thermax or something like that to, to get that emulsified, That's yeah. Cool. Thinking to, that I could use this to emulsify the neem, which I'm gonna end up using during the winter. Okay. That's a great tip, so thank you. Yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you before we get started is, what is Jadam? So, uh, Jadam technology's been around for a long time. Build a Soil sells, uh, I think, both different Jadam books. You know, Growing Organic was already making soap and things like that, so we already had pretty much everything we needed to make the Jadam. And, you know, Build a Soil was asking for it, and so we just started playing around with it and making it. It's very simple, it's only a few ingredients. What we're gonna mix today is basically lye, water, and canola oil. You can use a different type of oil. You're gonna have to play around with the recipe though because how much lye it takes and the lye water mix to saponify with the oil, it changes based on the oil you're using. So this exact recipe is not gonna work if you wanted to use it, if you wanted to use some other type of oil like avocado oil or something like that. Canola oil is what Jadam uses in the original recipe. And so we source organic canola oil and that's what we're gonna use as the base. And canola oil on its own actually has, there's some white papers on using that as a pesticide Definitely basically. Yeah. yeah, so we, just, we opted to stick with that oil. If you're making different types of soap, like a Castile soap or something like that, it's gonna be a very similar process to this. The same type of lye is gonna be used, potassium hydroxide, but we're just gonna use different types of oils. So that's where things start to kind of change with, with soap making and things like that. And then one question real quick, the recipe that's on the back of the bottle, they were supposed to be bringing us one, we don't have it right now to show you what the, the product look like, looks like that comes from Build the Soil, but on the back of the bottle, are you using lye or are you making it from what's in your bottle already? No, you're making it from scratch. So yeah, so what's in that bottle is not gonna be able to like be a starter to reproduce right. it. So you gotta start from scratch. Again, the items you need are gonna be KOH, which is potassium hydroxide. If you're ordering something like that, it's tough to get 50 pound bags. You have, they have to ship them on a pallet. But there's, there's some sources where you can get like two pound jugs of it and you want the flakes. That's, that's basically it and the canola oil and water. And so one, one aspect of the Jadam technology is their wetting agent. And that's what we're gonna make today. So there's other stuff too, like Jadam sulfur, which I've actually played around with. I've got like 16 gallons sitting at the house. I just need to start playing around and testing it so we can figure out dosing and all that kind of stuff. There's quite a few different things that they have. And like I said, there's a, there's a full orange book uh, that Build the Soil sells with all these different recipes in there. So you can learn how to make a lot of these different things at home and on your own. Back here, Desiree, she is prepping the beds for winter. As you can see behind me, the greenhouse is empty and we're transitioning to winter now. So all the tomatoes are almost all the way down. She's back there amending the beds with some gypsum and soy protein. We usually use Kraft Blend, but that's getting a little bit expensive right now. So we decided to try something different. It's working out really good. We've been doing it this summer. So that's what she's doing. She's gonna be in the background. Right here, we have all this stuff and I'm really curious. I wanna know what it all is, yep. so. This is a bucket of lye. I keep this totally sealed. Lye is not something you wanna with. So you just gotta be very careful of that. We got a scale. Uh, to follow our recipe because we're going to be doing things in grams to weigh out how much water to how much lye. Safety equipment. If you're going to make this, have, have masks, goggles, you need long sleeves, you need shoes on, you need pants. You want to cover up as much as your, of your body as you can. Over here we've just got some canola oil. This is organic canola oil. Once we're done mixing everything, we're going to dilute everything into this barrel that I brought down here for Gwen to tap out of whenever she needs it. And then over here, we've got finished product that we're gonna dilute today. This is what it'll look like after that other step is done. Now we're gonna make every, we're gonna do every aspect of this. So it'll be from start to finish. You'll get to see every step because I've already got some completed stuff that we're gonna dilute as well. What I've got is you need a, a metal pot that can stand up to high temperatures because once we mix this water and lye, we're gonna be over 200 degrees like instantly. We also don't necessarily wanna breathe this in. So when I'm doing this, I'm gonna have a mask on. I'm not really gonna talk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 1200 grams of water and I'm gonna put it in this first. 
you absolutely have to have the water in first and you add lye to water. If you add water to lye, you might die, like for real. So well, it'll, 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 it'll volcano up. Yeah. It can get all over you. It'll burn your skin. I mean, like legit, like you can like dissolve bodies with this stuff. So it's like, you do not want to play with it. I'm going to have you actually stand back just a little bit, Gwen, okay. um, to make sure we don't get any kind of splashing or anything like that on you. But remember, you're going to put the lye into the water, not the water into the lye. That's correct, the most correct. <laughs> so I've already got, we're going to do 938 grams of water. I've already got 700 in here. So we're gonna add 238 grams of water to this, and then we're gonna add 1200 grams of lye. And then once that's done, we're gonna let the lye dissolve into the water. It's gonna, you'll see it all be cloudy. And then within about a minute, minute and a half, it'll turn back to clear and it'll be totally dissolved in there. And this will get up to temperature. So the sides of this are gonna be hot. So we're gonna be careful with that. As soon as that's done and that lye is totally broken down into the water, we're gonna add 1.78 gallons of canola oil. And I've already got that measured out there. So I'm gonna dump that in, and then I'm gonna use an emulsion blender to mix that up for two or three minutes, something like that. And you can just get these, you can get these at Walmart or Target or wherever. When you're um, mixing with the emulsion blender, I mean, are there any precautions you're taking as far as making sure you don't get anything splashed on you? Yeah, so I'm gonna wear rubber gloves. I'm gonna have a mask on. I'm gonna put a long sleeve shirt on. Okay. I've got shoes and long pants, got a hat on. So usually it's good when you're mixing it, it stays pretty calm in there. However, if it does splash up or something, it is gonna burn your skin pretty good. So that's why you just, you wanna try and cover every inch of your body just in case. So I'm gonna get suited up real quick and then we'll get started on this. 938 grams of water, 1200 grams of lye goes into the water. Then we're gonna add 1.78 gallons of canola oil and mix it with an emulsion blender. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get suited up. As long as she's away, she's fine. So now we've got 938 grams in. If you're using the same vessel to weigh out your water and your lye, make sure the vessel is dry after you weigh out the water. Because once the lye hits water, it's going to react. There we go. Okay, now this is when the reaction's gonna happen. So I'm gonna dump this in. You can already see the fumes coming off of it. And it's already hot to the touch. We're gonna let that sit for just a minute. It's hot. All right, so we're basically waiting for this lye to dissolve into the water. We don't want to add our oil until that's done. Uh, it's very hot right now, and it'll take a minute, minute and a half for this, to, for this reaction to happen. We're getting there. See, now it's pretty much clear. Now we're gonna add 1.78 gallons of oil to this. But when I pour this, if you guys just want to step back just in case it splashes at all. I have a quick question. Is there an order for that, for the oil to, to lie or lie to oil? Yeah, because you're not going to remove this out. Just because it's, we keep it in that steel bucket because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hot for a couple of hours. We're going to add oil to this. And we want it to stay in this metal vessel because the temperatures, it's, it's really hot to the touch. You want to be careful when you're pouring this. You don't want it to splash. Now we're gonna blend it up and it'll start to get to a, uh, like a milky white consistency and it'll thicken up slightly. And that's what we're looking for. We don't need to over blend it. We're not making other types of soap. So probably a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Okay. So now that our mix is done and we've got it at this consistency, we're gonna let this sit for at least two days and harden up. What I've done already is I made a batch of this yesterday or two days ago. This is what it looks like when it's done. It's gonna be all hardened up. It's gonna be like a, a thick kind of gel. I'll touch it. Well, you can it's touch like, it? It's like, yeah, it's almost yeah. Like, uh, like Vaseline consistency. So why is it not burning you now? Because the reaction's already kind of happened. Oh. There's gonna be lye in this still, but it's not gonna be at a level where it's gonna like burn my skin or something like that. Again, when we're making this, 
This is still dangerous. It's still very hot. I don't want to understate that this is, this is a dangerous process. You guys, if you're going to make it at home, you need to make sure you're following all these different steps and taking all the safety precautions that we've mentioned. Because even if you just open up this bucket of lye without water in it, breathing. like, yeah, oh man, you can, you know you're breathing in something you shouldn't be breathing in. It can burn your uh, throat and your lungs. It can burn all your skin. So I think even if you're doing this at home, I'm a pretty over precautious person. So yep. just especially if it's your first time, right? Like AJ's done this a whole bunch. Just it is a really dangerous product. Make sure you always put your lye into your water, not your water into your lye. Correct. And just be covered up and don't do anything stupid. Yeah. And make sure, you know, you don't want to be on like a plastic table doing this because this is really hot right now. And at, you know, bottom line is we want everybody to be sustainable at home, make their own things at home. But if you really don't want to go through this process, it's one of the top selling products over at build a I use it every week, every day in my greenhouse. It's available at build And we do and our best also, to make it affordable too. If you look at like, this is like a gallon shipped to your door for like 40 bucks, I think. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a lot cheaper than a lot of other IPM stuff. Here. And yeah, yeah. So we're even like the, the Castile soap. If you're using the Castile soap that we make, this is very similar product without the essential oils added. And it's a fraction of the price. Okay, so. also I want to mention that I love the Jadon, but I also love that Castile soap. Yep. If you've ever pruned a, a house full of herb or you've done tomatoes or anything like terps are so insane and they get stuck to your hands. When I'm done, I don't like to prune with gloves. Okay. So I wanted to mention that that Castile soap is Cleans just green, one of my good. favorite products. Yeah. I have it here. We use it at the greenhouse all the time, but it's it gets literally every single last bit of tomato terps off my hands. Nice. Never had a product that does that. So anyways, I it's really, really versatile do too. love like that You can product. use it for laundry. You know, Everything. you can use it for dishes. You can use it in the shower. We wash all our rags whatever. with it here. Yep. And then on, on top of that, we use the Jadam to spray down all our harvest baskets and our salad okay. spinner okay. now. And we yep. use that as a cleaning practice here at the greenhouse. Sweet. So awesome. anyways, let's keep going. What's the next thing we're gonna do? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start diluting these that are finished into this barrel. And then we're going to, in a few days, Gwen's gonna dilute this one into the barrel. And then in about a week, it'll be ready. So depending on temps, if it's warm, if you're in like a, you know, if it was summertime and we were running 90 degrees in here and you just stir that a couple times a day, it'd probably be ready in about three days. Okay. But because it's cooler outside, it's gonna take longer for this to break down and, and dilute and you know assimilate with the water. So you're probably looking more like around like a week. And then real um, quick, uh, the, the amount that we've made, so you're gonna put two of these in there, correct? correct. So Is this recipe specific these? to 50 gallons worth? Um, no, so these are specific to what we can comfortably fit into to these is really how the, the recipe is, is broken down. We're gonna end up with about 35 gallons okay. of finished Jadam product with these three being diluted. Okay. Between 35 and 40, something in that neighborhood of finished, okay. finished Jadam. And then we've got a, a tap on this barrel so Gwen can just come tap right out of it. We've got this stacked on a pallet too because if you're gonna do something like this and use that tap, you wanna make sure you can actually access that tap because if this barrel is just sitting on the ground, you're not gonna get underneath it. And once we add everything to it, you're not really going to be able to lift it up. So this is the spot we chose here. It makes it easy for the uh, employees to come grab out of it and go spray the greenhouse. So. so this has been sitting for two days. You can see it's pretty hard. I'm just going to chop this up and slice it a little bit. The goal here is just to get all this out of this container that it's in and into this black barrel. You can use tools to do that. I've found using my hands is actually the easiest. And then when you're diluting this, you want to be careful. Once you start adding the water, you want to pour it in as slow as possible because if we're adding this quickly, it's gonna to start to foam up and we're, we're gonna to start to basically lose those suds. And we'll go over that on how we're gonna mix it as well and why we're not gonna use like a big drill to get this homogenized. So I'm just grabbing out like a slice at a time now. We're just gonna drop it in there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's just like, it's like Vaseline, like mass amounts of Vaseline. Got it, get it, Finished everybody product, get it, it's amazing. So this is the finished product. This is what you would get if you bought some from Build the Soil. Eric just brought it over for us. As I said before, how to make it at home. All the instructions are here on the back. This is what I go through in the greenhouse, but I need way more than this. So that's why AJ has been so kind to come down today and teach me and you guys how to make it at home. Cutting it like a pie. Yeah, right, get it, get in there, AJ. What do you do? You just keep piling it up? Yep, just keep piling it up. I didn't go to the gym yet. <laughs> so cool. 
All right. We're about to add water into our finished base now. And these are the two pots that I had brought down that were already completed. They need to sit for two days. So the one we just made today, that's gonna sit. That one will get added into this with a little bit more water, keep mixing it, diluting it. And then a few days after that, it'll be ready to go. Now I'm gonna start adding in water. The best way to do it that I found is get one of these nice little measure uh, buckets, fill the soil has them. And you wanna add this water in as slowly as you can. We wanna avoid getting this to sud up the best we can. We're gonna get some foam, but we just wanna try and keep it at a minimum. All right, so, so far we've put in, there's been 14 gallons put in here. AJ's very carefully putting the bucket in here and kind of hitting the sides as he dumps it out so that it's not making too much foam. And now he's putting the last two gallons in. And after that, we'll be doing some, some mixing. I think he has some specific ways to do that, so. We're just gonna do some light mixing to get those globs moving around. And again, with higher temperatures, like if you're in the middle of the summer and it's 85 degrees, and you're stirring it a couple times a day, it'll get totally diluted in probably three, maybe four days. With it being in the 70s now, it's gonna take probably seven, eight days for this to be fully assimilated and exactly like what's in that bottle over there okay, of, of cool. finished product. So Gwen, if you want, throw the paddle in there. We wanna mix it kind of slow and just kind of get them moving a little bit, trying to move the, the globs and break them up a little bit. And the reason we don't want to use a paddle mixer on this is because it's just going to foam up. Because every time it's foaming up, it's losing some of that, some of that saponification action that it has. So yeah, we want to mix it up gently. And then one thing you can do too, especially if you need it to be ready faster, is you can get in there with some gloves and you can start grabbing some of these blobs and breaking them up into smaller pieces. Because that's really what takes time to break down. And some of them will start to come back together. It's just a a daily chore of coming in and stirring it a little bit and trying to get those clumps off the bottom and up into the water. I'm gonna leave Gwen with some instructions of stirring this twice a day. And if they wanna get it ready faster, having somebody with some gloves get in here and just do what I'm doing right now. Just try and break this up into smaller chunks. But yeah, that's that's it. So we're pretty much done now. We wanna let this sit until it's, it'll, it's gonna look like soap when it's done. It's gonna be thicker. It's gonna have more of a golden color. All right, so we've got everything in there now. We just mixed it up with the paddle. I had some gloves on and my hands in there. You can start to break it up into smaller chunks if you want. That'll speed up this process. But I'm gonna have Gwen mix this with the paddle twice a day until it's totally finished. Get the stuff off the bottom, get it moving a little bit, just a nice little flow, shut it, and that's it. So nothing too extravagant, nope. just a, like four or five turns and then yep. done. Yep. And then when it's all said and done, we'll go see the finished product. We're actually gonna show you right now, we have a bottle that just got brought over during yep. the videos. It's gonna have more of a golden color, and it's, I mean, it's gonna look like a, a thin liquid soap. So it's got that golden color. Yeah, Pretty but cool. it's very sudsy. You can just feel it just wants to coat your skin. It's just, yeah. just like a thinner version of like Dawn dish soap or whatever. So that's what it should look like when it's done. You don't want to have any chunks in there and then it's ready to use. I'm going to show you real quick what it looks like when we're talking about it getting foamy, but I don't want to use all of that. It's just like your regular soap. But I think one of the things AJ was talking about when you're stirring it for your initial batch that you're making and not letting it get too so soapy or foamy. Right. So I'm going to show you how how easy it does that. Let's see how quickly. <laughs> we got tons of <laughs> tons of foam. So uh, I know you're like, it works. Yeah. <laughs> Just when you fill up the 15 gallon sprayer, I always fill up my sprayer first and then I add this and then I do a, a slow stir because yep. if you're trying to fill up 15 gallons after you've put that in. It it's just, all foam. It just ends yeah. up bubbles. Yeah. yeah. AJ, thank you so much for coming out today. Absolutely. This Thanks for having me down. I love doing these videos, especially just learning things for myself. I feel for like sure. we get to educate you guys on um, some of the products that we love and respect and just really lean on here at Build a Soul Family Farms. I mean, your time is invaluable. Thank you for coming out today. Absolutely. I, my, I've, I've had so much fun learning about all this, doing a little science experiment. Yep. As you guys know, I'm having a hip surgery here very soon. So we really wanted to get this video in for you guys to make some content. If you guys have any questions as normal, we'll go do our very best to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode.